This new. Week. new, 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 yeah, new, 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 new. Let's start with this. Okay, first up, um, this is a Panahand. So this is kind of interesting. This is by, uh, I think, Hobby. Oh shoot, what's it? Can you, sorry, I can't remember the name. Hobby something. Uh, I can't remember the name of the company. It's Hobby something, and um, they make this is an add-on for uh, Panavice Third Hand. So um, you can mount it onto the base. And okay, can you pass me that? And then you can like put the, it has the same mounting hole grid as the um, Panavice. So you can basically have like a, a Panavice with all these like awesome third hand things and like they bend and they've got like clips and stuff and like they can hold anything and you can like, you can move these around too. And this is, I have one of these and it's like the best thing ever. And it works with the big Panavice or the small Panavice in. Um, it's not an official accessory, but like, it really helps, especially if you have the small pan device. It helps weigh it down so that it doesn't tip over as much. Anyways, this is really cool. Okay. Hobby Creek. That's the name of the company. Okay. So, yeah, it's Next cool. Up. Machined. Um, this is a small USB hub. It's a four-port hub. It has a micro USB port. This is kind of designed. Well, we're specifically carrying it for the Raspberry Pi Zero, but you can use it with anything that has an on-the-go connector and you want to add a hub to, so you can have four things connected to it. And it's an on-off switch, which we find very, very handy. Um, we use these in production when we have to turn on and off a bunch of USB devices at a time. Okay. Uh, next up, the third device. Um, this is switch. almost identical, except it has a standard USB-A connector instead of a micro-B connector. So okay. This is for normal computers. Um, again, we're carrying this for um, uh, use with uh, Raspberry Pi A Plus models or BeagleBone Black or a single board computers that basically, you know, you plug in a hub and you want to have a mouse and a keyboard. If you only have one USB port, you would, need, you would not be able to have both mouse and keyboard, but now you can do both. Yep. It is a hub. Okay, and I skipped around on this. Um, I hope it was okay to do this one first. It's yeah, right. that's, that's okay. fine. This is um, the uh, Pi Girl 2 Gamepad Button PCB. This is for a project that we have, and we're selling just the PCB, and we're also selling the kit, and this is the thing you get to build. Can you go? Through? Yeah, it's for this. It's for this. Which, oh, thank you, kind assistant, <laughs> um, for, for handing that to me. It is a um, pocket uh, Game Girl. It is a um, DIY Raspberry Pi 2 powered uh, portable gaming station. Um, do you want to go to the overhead real fast and I'll just, just kind of show yeah, it? Yeah, did you want me to, um, uh, you wanted to show Yeah, it. I'll just show this for, for, for in a second. So, you know, you basically build your own uh, 3D printed Raspberry Pi game system and you can um, play, you know, The Legend of Zelda or something. I don't, I don't know exactly what I just clicked. We'll find out. So, Nintendo, and then, yeah, this is gonna play. Legend of Zelda. Oh my goodness, look at those graphics. Yeah, this is pretty sweet graphics. So this is using a FBCP and the runs emulation station. This is a totally stolen ROM, a, you know, whatever, commit crimes, play Nintendo games, good times. Can emulate all kind of like, you know, Genesis, Nintendo, SNES, um, Atari, Amiga, Commodore 64, all that good stuff. Uh, you want to build one? Of course you do. Why don't you want to build one? Everybody wants to have their own handheld pocket pie girl. Um, to make it easy for you, um, we have a pack with all of the parts except for the 3D printed case and buttons. So you do need to 3D print some stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's pretty easy to solder. This custom PCB makes it a lot easier. Uh, connect a battery, battery powered and, and charge, connect the Pi TFT to um, this thing, plug it into the, uh, Raspberry, Pi, the Raspberry Pi model B, uh, Pi 2 and you have a high-speed emulation station. So you can get the PCB. So if you want to like DIY, you have all the stuff already, you can get just the PCB, or you can get the kit, and it has everything except for the hand tools, wire, solder. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting kind of question. Uh, I've seen lots of like phone cases and all sorts of accessories where everyone's kind of made the Game Boy silhouette and every, everything. Um, we don't want to test Nintendo to find out if they'd care. So we oh, yeah. we just put up the files. You print your own case. Right. Um, we don't make the cases. We're not Game Boy. We're not Nintendo. Yeah, we cannot, we cannot sell the case. Yeah, because we you get, have asked, to we get asked all the time. But you can print it out, and, it, and it's fine. And I, I, People do it as a, as a beginner project. It's designed yeah. to be fairly easy to print. But yes, but, we cannot sell the case. But don't we, ask We, we did, can't 3D print it for you either. We did think about it. And we're like, I don't think we should get in the business of making something that's an ejected molding case that looks just like what Nintendo, <laughs> Nintendo makes. Yeah, that's not really. Yeah. yeah, that's not our thing. Okay. 
I mean, they're um, still. I think they still. I'm sure sell something that looks like it. So. I don't. I don't want to. Who I knows? I really like Nintendo. I don't want to. I, I don't want to. I don't want to get entangled to Nintendo. So this is our um, NeoPixel ring section of the show tonight. Ooh, so we have a bunch. Kind of like a face or something. So do you want me to just step through? Because yes. This are uh, we have rings and also um, jewels. So this is the beginning of adding RGBW versions of all our NeoPixel rings. So you can tell this one has. RGB, it can do a color swirl, but it also has white LED elements. Um, you can mix and match them. You can have RGB w, w all at once, but it's just easier to, to show if I have only the white LEDs on to, so you can see the, the color temperature of those. Um, so these are NeoPixel compatible, um, but they have four LED elements, so you just need to make sure that your library supports RGBW, which ours does. And we have these in all of the ring sizes. So we can okay. go forward to so get 12 LED rings. And you can yeah. kind of see that the little yellow spot, that's the, um, yeah, the, the yellow spot on, on the outside, that's the white phosphor. Uh, we also and have then, it in yeah. 16 and LED. What I did is I put together some, some of these I could, I got all the images in time, some of them I didn't. Oh, it's fine. We just basically yeah. have all of the different um, LED rings. I'll, I'll also demo it, but uh, we also have we the have jewels. Jewels. This one is a great image because you can see yeah, cool, neutral, and warm. So starting from the, the top left, there's RGB, and then uh, cool white, neutral white, and warm white. So each of the rings has, you can get the RGB version, and three versions of RGBW where the white phosphor has slightly different color temperature. I couldn't quite decide which color temperature people would want the most. So I just said, OK, fine, let's just make all three, and then we'll figure out what people like. And if there's one that just never sells, we'll just discontinue it. and like whatever. So we have these jewels, these are cute little seven LED jewels. And yeah, I just wanna flip through them real fast and then this is a picture, there's seven LEDs. You can see these have a little yellow phosphor. Um, they I, are cute. This and then is the I warm. Have the different temperatures. That they warm, to. neutral, and then cool. The cool yeah. is very blue. Yeah, and I have a little video for each one. Yeah, that's cool. Goes, Sorry, this is warm. That's not cool. Warm. That's warm. Yeah. This one is gonna be natural, neutral, and this one is going to be cool. So you can see that yeah. very cool blue-white. And then we also have uh, 24 LED rings, um, 60 LED rings, and then uh, you can just skip, skip ahead to the uh, sticks. sticks. Sticks, same, same pic thing with this picture. You can see that there's three different color temperatures of white and just RGB as well. The ones with white are a little bit more expensive, so maybe if you don't need it, you don't need it. Um, are. These are the sticks. There you go. Showing the warm white, neutral white, cool white. And then, we have some and then RGB. And then, you know, again, neutral white or cool white. So you can see by the reflection, Andrew's gotten really good at these. And then I catch them really fast in the yeah. head. Just it's your show, man. Well, I know, but we have to do <laughs> time. So, um, yeah, we just have these. Uh, Stick demo, so just showing, let's see. Let's try the best. So yeah, you can see um, RGB. RGB, and then each one also has white as well. So um, I don't remember which, which color temperature all of these are. This one I think is warm, this one is neutral, and this one is cool. It's kind of bright in here, so it's hard to tell. But the animated GIFs we have are, are pretty good at showing what the color temperature is. Some people really care about it. If you don't care, just get the neutral white because that's, it doesn't look warm, it doesn't look cool. But if you, are, um, if you want something that looks like flames or like a candlelight, go for warm. If you want something that uh, looks like daylight or like indoor fluorescent lighting, get the cool. All right. Next up. <laughs> Party. Yeah. Um, Oh, thank you, kind assistant. Star, you're so good at this. I, I get to say the stars of the show tonight because we besides, we have three stars. Yeah, is uh, are, are these are these products? So what is this lady in it? Okay, so we have two feather wings, and I wanted to get these out at the same time because they're kind of similar to each other. Um, so this is the Ada Logger feather wing, and this one adds a real time clock and a micro SD card, so you can do data logging with timestamps. You can put a battery in there, and then now you have a battery-backed uh, real-time clock. And it uses SPI I2C. It works with all of the feather wings. We have a photo here showing what it looks like with an SD card inside and also a coin cell. 
can store tons of data. You know, this is a good thing if you like, for example, you have a feather phona, so you have uh, a feather board with cellular built in and you want to data log something and maybe uh, upload a file only once in a while to GPRS. Um, you would do this, you would log to SD card and then connect to the cellular network and then upload the file, for example. So that's, that's a good demonstration of what we want to do with it. It works with any of the feathers. You can use it with ESP8266, 32U4, um, the Bluetooth ones, the Wi-Fi ones, whatever you like, and you just add data logging and a real-time clock. Okay, next up. But let's say you want a really good real-time clock. Like you want, you know, the real-time clock on the on the ADA logger is pretty good. You're gonna, you know, gain or lose a, a second or two every once in a while. But if you want a really precision real-time clock feather wing, this one has a DS3231, which is a temperature compensated crystal. So you pretty much never lose more than like one second a year or something ridiculous. Uh, it's extremely good. And um, once in a while, people are just like, they really want like precision, precision timing. So you would get um, this real time clock and it's, it's just really good at keeping track of time. That's what it's good for. Okay. And then we mentioned this before, but Arduino Micro. And the Arduino Micro, which we manufactured, Arduino Micro with header. Uh, we will not be making the Arduino Micro without header as far as I can tell, that was not requested. Um, so we will be making the one with header. But uh, we have a bunch of other 32 uh, 4 based boards you can check out, like the Teen C2, uh, similar chipset. Um, so same chipset, uh, similar IDE. You can use that if you need something smaller and thinner. So I'm excited. We're going to be doing the Arduino starter kits next. And uh, that's, that's pretty, and then we'll take it from there. OK, and with that, those are your new products. New, 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 new.